Hi, I'm Mary and this is Let's Talk About Pets. Uh, we're going to be doing videos on puppy and kitten care today since there's so much we've split this into two videos. Since I am the doggy person, I'll be talking all about the puppies today. Uh, Carol, who is our resident crazy cat lady, will be doing a video on uh, kittens. Uh, so congratulations on your newest family member and uh, along with being so excited, there's a lot to learn. Um, first off, once you get your puppy, no matter where you get it from, whether it be from a shelter, Craigslist, a breeder, you need to make a, a veterinary appointment. Go and start talking to your vet about what vaccines may be needed, what preventions may be needed, what testing may be needed. Um, speak with your vet about this. The vaccines are uh, most important and all of getting that taken care of and setting up that relationship early will be really helpful. Um, when speaking of vaccines, Vaccines are generally very well tolerated. Occasionally though, they, there can be some reactions and we're gonna see those typically first when they're puppies or when they're first receiving different vaccines. So some of the things you should be aware of to look for is uh, vomiting, diarrhea, facial swelling, extreme lethargy, and hives. Now you wouldn't think you'd be able to see hives on a dog, but all the things will poke up and look a little funky. You'll be able to notice. If you notice any of those things, what you need to do is get on the phone, call your vet, let them know that this is happening, and then hop back in your car and drive back to the veterinary clinic. This way the veterinary clinic will be ready for when you show up and your puppy, and they can have everything all set. Um, one of the things I want to say though is puppies will, may, may, will be a little bit lethargic after their vaccines. Um, that can be normal. When I'm talking about extreme lethargy, this is that your very hyperactive dog or your very food motivated dog is not um, getting up to go play or to eat food. Those things are extreme lethargy. Um, another important thing after you uh, have talked to your vet about your vaccines and things that are needed is getting your dog socialized. Um, socialization is very important. Uh, kind of depending upon what level of vaccines that they've had will depend upon the level of socialization that you do. So a dog is not typically fully vaccinated until around 16 weeks old. So prior to this, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna to go to friend's house with fully vaccinated dogs or have your friends or family with fully vaccinated dogs come over to your house. This way your dog can have interaction with people and with other dogs. This is a key point. It's harder to socialize than the older they are. Um, now, once they've had a certain number of vaccines, different places will offer puppy classes. Getting them into a puppy class is also good socialization with other puppies. Uh, but usually this does require at least some level of vaccination um, and them to be healthy. Please, 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 please do not take your non-fully vaccinated pets to public environments. This includes dog parks. Um, you know that really wonderful like coffee shop that's got a patio that you see everybody else with their dog there? Don't take it there. Uh, even pet stores can be a little bit dangerous for your unvaccinated puppy. Certain pet stores are associated with veterinary clinics and so they get sick animals coming in. Uh, if you just have to take your puppy to one of them, please do not put them down. If they're small enough to carry, just carry them. Um, until they're fully vaccinated. And then, you know, then, then we're more on the okay trail. Um, a lot of things that go in with like socialization or even the puppy training. Um, when it comes to training, I'm probably not going to be the best person to tell you all the things to do. So that's why you're going to do your puppy classes. That's why you're going to kind of talk to your veterinarian about puppy trainers, things like that. Uh, what I can kind of talk about and will talk about a little bit is house training your puppy um, and using a crate to house train your puppy. Um, a crate does not have to be used for their whole life. You can get a crate, you can use the crate only during house training and once they got the house training down, you can fold up that crate, stick it in the attic and you're good. Or you can use a crate as an animal's bedroom, as their safe place, as their place that they can go to escape if the environment is too much. Some dogs don't do great with a whole lot of people and so they, or thunderstorms, so they may go to their crate as their safe space. Um, a good thing with crates and what you wanna do is, if you're gonna have a bigger dog, what you wanna do is get a big crate that can be sectioned down to be used in its smallest form for the, when the puppy is a puppy. Uh, puppies kind of have a, this innate thing where they don't necessarily wanna pee and poop 
where they sleep and eat. So if you use a crate that's just big enough for it to lay down, maybe put a food dish or a water dish in there, then that's perfect. If it's too big, your dog's gonna go pee and poop in one corner and then come back and lay down in the other and it's defeated the whole purpose. Um, the, again, the purpose of the crate is to keep them from using the restroom when you don't want to. Uh, the three key parts of house training is, um, well, three key times for house training is probably a better thing. When your puppy wakes up from sleeping, it's going to want to go poop and pee. Um, so taking it out right after waking up, after naps, after things like that. Another time is shortly after eating. Let them eat, go eat, drink some water, then go outside again. That works. Now the key part where people kind of get a little bit caught up is they will also poop and pee when they're bored. So say you've gotten home from work, you took your puppy out, they went to the bathroom outside, you praise them, you're playing with them, you're doing something, and then all of a sudden you either get a phone call or you decide, hey, it's time to cook dinner. Well, you're gonna stop playing with your puppy. You're gonna have thought, well, I just took him outside, so we're all good. The problem is your puppy's gonna go, oh, they're not playing with me anymore. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna go walk around behind the, uh, you know, couch and go pee. So what you can use a crate for is someone calls you, you pop your puppy back in the crate until you can pay attention to them again. Or if you're gonna be making dinner, you put them in the crate until you can be paying attention to them again. This doesn't have to be their whole life. This is just a training process until they know that going to the bathroom means outside. And that does not mean in the house. Um, there's another section of people that will use potty pads. I'm gonna say it's not recommended. May talk about this in a later video, but I'm not gonna get too much into it right now. But training your dog, the outside is where they go to the bathroom is gonna be the easiest thing for everyone. Um, once you kind of worked on those things, uh, Working on some desensitization with your dog is going to be really important. It's going to be helpful for you in the future if they ever need any type of medical treatment, medications, and it's going to be wonderful for your veterinarian and their technicians. Um, most dogs really don't like having their feet touched, their ears played with, um, eyes, mouth, those type of things. So when they're puppies, when they're small, we want to touch and play with all of them. Now, what you don't wanna do is just touch them and allow them to nip and bite at you. What you wanna do is you wanna play with them and then if they have no reaction or decreasing the reactions that they've had, you wanna give them treats. You want to pull on their ears, even it might be a little gross, stick your finger down in their ear. You want them to be able to know that you are allowed to do these things to them. Um, even playing with their mouth, you don't want them chewing on you, but you wanna be able to put your finger in there to touch their teeth, especially if you actually consider brushing your dog's teeth which again, we'll talk about in the future. Um, or the fact is, is, if you ever need to go in and grab something out that they shouldn't have been eating, or if you need to pill them, you wanna be able to put your hand in, your, in their mouth without them biting you. Playing with this, working on this when they're young is gonna be best. Um, the toenail trims is gonna be probably one of our harder things. Doesn't, there are some dogs that it doesn't matter how hard you try as a puppy, when you bring those nail trimmers out, they are just not gonna let you trim their nails. That's okay. What you can do is take them to the veterinarian. A lot of times they'll be much better at the vet's office for the technicians. It's either because it's just a new and different environment and they don't feel like, you know, they've got the power. We also give them treats and we give them love and we have multiple people to do it. So don't feel bad if you can't do it at home. Please bring them in. Um, the importance of keeping nails short, and I know it can be inconvenient to take them into the, the vet clinic, but it is important to keep the nails short. If the nails grow really long, they can start bending the toe in awkward positions, and that can then lead to them standing funny, and that can lead to joint issues, and on and on and on. So if your dog does not allow you to trim its nails, and their nails grow quickly, please make frequent trips to the veterinary clinic to get those trimmed. Um, as I mentioned earlier, puppies absolutely love to chew. Um, 
This because they're teething for the first six months of their lives. By four weeks, they've gotten like their little baby teeth are starting to come in. Once those fully come in, those fall, start to fall out as their adult teeth come in and they have their adult teeth by six months old. Um, so they're gonna wanna chew on things. You're gonna wanna give them all the options for chew things but you wanna give them appropriate chew things. So please don't go and be like, oh, I have this old tennis shoe. I thought it was really cute when he was chewing on this old tennis shoe, so I just gave it to him. The problem is your puppy's not gonna know the old tennis shoe from the new tennis shoe, and if that happens, then it all just goes bad. So you wanna kind of keep your puppy focused on toys that are puppy toys, or toys that aren't going to get confused with your toys in the house. Um, some dogs you can go through, you can use soft fluffy toys. Some dogs are gonna destroy those pretty quick. So you might need something a little bit more rugged and rough. Um, other dogs are uh, you know, smarter dogs or more active dogs. They need more things to uh, entertain them or keep them focused. So breeds kind of like cattle dogs, Australian Shepherds, uh, Vizlas, Huskies, anything that uh, might be considered a working dog, you might want to go through and find a toy that's like a a, a puzzle that they have to kind of go through before it gives them treats because the more the focus they are on this toy that's not just a chew toy they've got to do things the less likely they are to go and be causing problems in other places um, another thing with chewing is that dogs will often try to chew on you so if this is a problem you're having with your puppy it's best to always keep a toy on hand when you're playing with your puppy and if your puppy goes to chew on you replace yourself with the appropriate chew toy and then apply all the loves and be like oh good doggy good doggy here's the treats here's this toy or even get a toy that has a little bit of treats in it so that they know that this is the appropriate thing um anything that kind of will will engage that and, and show that is going to be really helpful um kind of next that i want to talk about is your puppy's feeding needs um my first comment here is please do not buy grain-free food. Um, the, it is a myth that grain-free food is good for your dogs. Uh, grain-free foods have been out there for a while. It is definitely a commercialized uh, fad. Uh, we are now having research studies that are showing us that grain-free foods are linked to heart disease. And you know, we already get such a short time with our pups, we really don't need to make it any shorter. Um, the best thing to look for is you can look for a puppy food or an all ages food that has the AFCO label on it. It's A-A-F-C-O. Um, what AFCO is, is a nonprofit organization that sets standards for both animal feed and pet foods in the United States. So if it has AFCO on it, it is a well balanced diet, a complete diet for your puppy. Um, another kind of diet fad that uh, is, is raw diets. Um, raw diets are kind of controversial. Um, those that love it will kind of swear by it. And I'm not necessarily going to debate that. If your adult dog does really great on raw food, okay. Um, I've never really worked for a veterinarian that has recommended a raw food diet. But you know, every animal's different. What I am gonna say is please, please, please do not feed your puppies a raw food diet. Your puppy's immune systems are still a thing in progress and raw food can increase the chances that your puppy gets salmonella or other bacterial infections. Uh, the same goes for small children. If you have raw food diets and your dog's eating a raw food, your dog has all that bacteria separate from normal dog bacteria in its mouth and it goes over and it licks and plays with your child and now your child has salmonella on its face so it's best to kind of stick away from that um until your dog is older if you really really have to do a raw food diet please wait till they're an adult um as far as how much to feed your puppy um meal feeding is usually best free feeding often leads to obesity or um kind of 
a lot of overweight dogs. Uh, some dogs, some dogs are fine. Some dogs can self-regulate. They'll nibble here and there and they stay nice and lean and congratulations. You are the exception, not the rule. Most dogs are gonna go eat their food and they're gonna eat what gets put out for them. So if we meal feed, we're better able to regulate exactly how much food they're getting. If you have a small breed dog, like a Yorkie, a Malty Poo, a Chihuahua, when they are small puppies, you might need to feed three to four meals a day. Um, this is because their blood sugars can get low. They're a little harder to regulate their small little bodies. Um, larger dogs, usually you can get away with two to three meals a day, even from the time they're eight weeks old. Um, as far as how much to feed them, Puppy food, when they're puppies, it's usually fine just to go off what the bag tells you on the back. It'll give you an age, it'll give you a weight range, and you can kind of feed in that range. Now, once your dog hits about six months, or get spayed or neutered, you're gonna wanna feed on the lower end of any of the food recommendations. Most of the food recommendations are meant for very active working dogs that are not spayed and neutered. If you're feeding them at the high end of the range, unfortunately, you're most likely gonna be overfeeding them. Um, but again, you can always kind of ask your doctor and talk about the options as far as how much food or different food or better foods. Um, there's so much. and. All of these things that I that I that I talk to you about, I talk to our our, our patients, our clients that come in. Um, these are all things that you can talk to your veterinarian about and kind of make sure that everything is is good for you guys. Um, I guess that's a lot, but that's also it. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Uh, thank you. Have a great day.